Some wonder whether that rant would be considered a violation of the newly reinstated gag order in the federal election interference case brought by special counsel Jack Smith. U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin lifted a temporary hold yesterday. The order was originally placed earlier this month at the request of prosecutors, but was paused after opposition from the Trump team. The former president reacted to the news uh, on his Truth Social page, writing in part, quote, it illegally and unconstitutionally takes away from my First Amendment right of free speech in the middle of my campaign for president. He has promised to appeal the ruling. I think it's important to note out that he could be campaigning, but he's been choosing to be in New York City at his civil fraud trial. He doesn't have to be there. But I think personally, my analysis is that has to do with his money yep. and his money being taken away from him. And he just can't stand not being there. But he keeps putting his foot in his mouth there. Too. He does have to be there a week from today. He has been called to be well, a witness. Well, he has to yes. testify. But his, and his adult children are going to be there between now and then. But to this point, you're right. And his campaign has been pretty clear about this. They view this as it's two things at once. One, okay. to your point, that yes, this is hitting Trump close to home. It's about his money. He wants to be there, defend the honor of his business, all that. He knows that he is, well, not going to be nearly as wealthy of a man at the end of this. But secondly, the campaign views this as a bit of an opportunity because this is his campaign right now. Is He's mm -hmm. fighting against persecution. He but is he's saying, pretending he has to be there. He doesn't have to be there. He doesn't have to be there, but, but Donald Trump pretends slash lies about everything. everything. So this is the latest part of that, is that okay. he's suggesting he's a victim. He's yeah. being made to be there, even though he doesn't have to be. It's all part of, he's connected to his followers. He, he's yeah. connected this trial with all the others, saying, look, they're all out to get me. Look at all the fronts. And there is a thought that if he's in the courtroom now, for a civil case, yeah. it will desensitize the public and let make voters less shocked when he actually has to appear in court next year in a federal case. Okay, I just think he's obsessed with his money. That, that Honestly, could, that's part of I just it. knowing the man and knowing his his sort of unbelievable obsessions. It's money, it's power, it's press, it's headlines. But this is attacking his money. I mean, he could be anywhere. By the way, he sort of was campaigning this weekend, but his head was still obviously somewhere else because he went to Iowa, but kept getting the name of the town wrong. Uh, joining us now, let's see what George Conway right. thinks about this. Attorney and contributing columnist at the Washington Post, George Conway. Am I wrong in my analysis that he's showing up at this civil fraud trial a lot because this one gets him where it really hurts? Yes, I, I fundamentally agree with that. I think it's even more, in a way, it's even more fundamental. This puts him out of business. This case is putting That's him out I mean. of business. Even yeah. if... Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's his that, that's his essence. And I, I, I mm -hmm. think that he's just he's terrified that, you know, he's not going to have the Trump Tower. And he's not going to have all the things that he has bragged about for decades for his yeah. 60, you know, for six decades are going that's going to be gone and um, he won't be able to run a business. And the question is, how much money of, is he going to be allowed to keep from that? And that's that to him is that's striking at the core of Donald Trump. So I'm just I random question. When you're fined ten thousand dollars by a judge, do you have to actually give that money the next day? Do you have time? Can you put it on a credit card? How does that work? Well, I, I think I think I saw some correspondence in the in, in the in the news media that was reported that that, that Alina Haba's firm actually wrote the check on behalf of Trump and submitted it to the uh, client protection fund or whatever the order required in New York. So he he has paid that. I mean, obviously, it's just it, at this point, it's just symbolic Pennies. and no, trivial to Donald Trump at this point. But the fact is that after a while, um, you know, mm -hmm. if he keeps engaging in this conduct, attacking Judge Justice Engeron and his law clerk, um, he, he could actually be, you know, sent to the tombs or somewhere um, with the, the main, you know, the main jail in New York City. But, but we'll see how that goes. I'm not sure. How, how would you put a former president in, in lockup in New York City uh, with Secret Service? I mean, I would, the reason I ask about the money is because I'm not sure how possible that is. And so maybe they could put him under, tell him to stay home or something. But... Uh, the bigger question is, could those fines get bigger and bigger and bigger as he misbehaves? Yes, the fines can get bigger and bigger as he misbehaves. I mean, one, one method that has been used by courts in the past to enforce uh, criminal contempt sanctions 
or, or, or civil, civil contempt sanctions mm -hmm. is to keep increasing the fines geometrically, uh, you see. know, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. Right. And he, he, uh, Justice Engeron could keep ramping, ramping those figures up. Um, he certainly has a record to do that, um, mm -hmm. having basically had, the, had Trump violate the order multiple times under, right under the, just, the judge's nose in the courthouse. Right. Okay. So this